Welcome to the Story of Liberty. Join us on this amazing tour of Niagara Falls, New York. seems very calm here, just 30 yards from the edge of the falls. We're at Luna Island. And here you can see the bridge, and then just a few feet away is the precipice of Niagara Falls. Here we are at the precipice of Niagara Falls. Liberty. We're here in Niagara Falls, uh, beautiful Niagara Falls, uh, New York. Of course, Canada is right there on the other side, Niagara Falls, Canada. This plaque here is uh, a dedication to uh, Lewis Hennepin, who was a great missionary. In fact, most of the um, knowledge of, the, of these falls right here in Niagara Falls is because of Lewis Hennepin. He traveled here in the 17th century and he spread the gospel of Christ here to the, the Indians. He was actually captured at one point and taken to what is now called the uh, Minnesota, the state of Minnesota. Uh, and uh, there, of course, Hennepin County is named after him in honor of Father Hennepin, a Catholic priest. So we see here this is dedicated to him, the man who sp spread the gospel throughout his whole life. He was really a missionary at heart. That's what he did. And he went through these, uh, you can imagine what this was like several hundred years ago. Niagara Falls in its original state here has not changed much. But as you know, uh, this is a great story of a man who had a heart to do what the Great Commission said, to spread the good news throughout the world. That's what he did. Hennepin, uh, Lewis Hennepin traveled with LaSalle, uh, the great LaSalle. In much of this area, there are several cities here called LaSalle. Uh, they traveled together up the Mississippi River. Lewis uh, Hennepin was the uh, the first white man, known white man, to preach the gospel here on the Niagara frontier. Uh, and he was also the first person that could really describe Niagara Falls to the rest of the world. His description of the falls is the beginning of the story of Niagara Falls. And they have this plaque here in, in memory of him. So it's just great to be here. Enjoy us uh, the rest of the day uh, as we take you through some of the interesting places. The Maid of the Mist, which is a great ride here. But we're going to go in some tunnels and underneath the falls. Looking forward to you joining us and staying with us at the Story of Liberty. At the foot of the horrible precipice, we meet with the River Niagara. It is so rapid above this descent that it violently hurries down the wild beasts while endeavoring to pass it. To feed on the other side, they not being able to withstand the force of its current, which inevitably cast them down headlong above 600 foot. Okay, join us on the main mist. Here we are. Right here, we're going to go down to the falls down here. It's about a mile right. And uh, so we're on the horn blower. Join us in the Maid of the Mist. The first voyage of the Maid of the Mist was in 1846. Before this date, rowboats ferried passengers across the Niagara River below the falls. By 1846, however, entrepreneurs decided a bigger craft could profit by transporting people, luggage, mail, and cargo. So the first made in the mist steamboat, large enough to carry a stagecoach and horses, was christened. In 1848, construction of a suspension bridge curtailed business and the made in the mist was rebranded as a sightseeing adventure that still operates to this day. From 1846 until 1854, the first made of the mist, a single wide steamboat ferry with twin smokestacks, commanded the mighty Niagara River. In 1861, Captain Robinson's legendary ride entered history. Facing financial troubles and fearing the outbreak of the Civil War in the U.S., then made of the mist owner, W.O. Buchanan sold the boat at auction. A Montreal firm agreed to buy it if the boat was delivered to Lake Ontario. After the most seasoned sailors refused to navigate the Whirlpool and Devil's Hole Rapids, three miles of the world's wildest waters, 
the Maid of the Mist's own captain, Joel B. Robinson, took the boat on a wild ride. The boat and crew were practically swallowed alive before arriving safely at Queenston. Welcome to the uh, beautiful Red Coach Inn here in Niagara Falls. My parents, uh, Frank and Nancy, actually got married here and spent their honeymoon here. Established 1923. This is a great uh, place just to reminisce and come and, and feel the history here at Niagara Falls. The Red Coach Inn, it's a beautiful hotel and great place for lunch and dinner. Enjoy with the family. When the Red Coach Inn, a Niagara Falls, USA historic hotel and bed and breakfast, opened its doors for business on August 30th, 1923, Niagara Falls had finally become the honeymoon capital of the world. Situated near the center of town overlooking the spectacular Upper Rapids, the inn was an imposing structure at the time, being three and a half stories high, and built in the architectural style of the old English Tudor period. Above the fireplace in the grill room inside the hotel is a painting of General Lafayette's famous red carriage for which the inn is named. The painting is done by Buffalo artist Raphael Beck. The scene depicts the greeting of Lafayette at the Eagle Tavern, which was located across the street in the early 19th century. Thank you so much for joining us at the Story of Liberty. And we will end this short tour of Niagara Falls by showing you a fantastic fireworks display over Niagara Falls.